using the information learned from BPDUs, a switch will build something like a map of the network. Not exactly a full map though, more like signposts pointing the way to the root bridge. And that's the key point here. Spanning tree is all about finding the best path to the root bridge. Think about the switch that we just turned on, which received a superior BPDU. It received that BPDU on a particular port, so it knows that this port points the way through to the root bridge. It names this port the root port. All switches have a single root port. The only exception is the root bridge, which doesn't have a root port. After all, it doesn't need a path to the root bridge because it is the root bridge. Let's not lose sight of the big picture though. Spanning tree needs to find loops in the network. How might it do that? To understand that, we need to know about something called path cost. As you know, each interface has a speed, something like 100 meg or 1 gig. Spanning tree uses this value to assign a cost to a port. The faster the interface, the lower the cost. There are two different ways that spanning tree might calculate the cost, the old way and the new way. The old way isn't so good in modern networks. It was developed way back when all interfaces were slow, by today's standards. These days, as most interfaces are fast, the cost looks very similar on all ports. So the new method addresses this by using larger cost values. The key point here is that spanning tree will assign a cost to every interface. We've just used some small values in the topology here to keep things simple. If we use show spanning tree again, we can see the cost on each interface. Notice that these are gigabit interfaces and the cost is four. There's not much room to get a smaller cost for faster interfaces, is there? So we can change the path cost method to long. This is done in configuration mode with the spanning tree path cost method long command. When we look at the costs again, see how they're much bigger? That doesn't mean that the costs are worse than before, it just means they're calculated differently. Faster links will still have smaller costs and slower links will still have larger costs. Remember that in the original spanning tree, the root bridge continually sends BPDUs. The directly connected switches can see the cost of the interface they receive the BPDU on and therefore they'll know how far away the root bridge is. They forward the BPDUs on, but only after they have added this path cost to the message. When the next switch receives this BPDU, it will add the cost of its own interface to the value in the BPDU. Now it knows the distance to the root bridge as well, and it also knows which port is closest to the root bridge. If there is more than one path to the root bridge, it can now also know which is the best path. The port connected to the best path is called the root port. And remember, there can only be one root port per switch. It acts like a signpost pointing out the direction and the distance to the root bridge. These two questions should help to see if you've understood this section. If not, it might be a good idea to have a quick review before going on to the next part as you really need to understand root ports and path costs for the next section.